And it's like when you have that choice to do something it's better than alcohol, right. man. Yeah. Yeah. And the funny thing is, if you're trying to stop drinking, you need something better than alcohol. Mm-hmm. And alcohol is pretty good. Yeah. So you better find something a lot <laughs> better, man. Yeah. And then it is. And then esteemable people do esteemable things. It's like, yeah, well, you want to figure out you want to figure out something that you're doing with your life that's worth not getting drunk and screwing up. Yeah. Right. Because that's fun. Yeah, you want to have something on the other side of that teeter-totter that has uh, some value to you. You bet. You yeah. bet. And so that you can think, no, no, I'm not going to get drunk and screw that up. Right. Because, you know, you might say, well, why do people drink too much? It's like, if you like alcohol, that's a stupid question. Yeah. Right? It's like, why do people drink too much? Well, because it's great. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, so why stop? Well, you do stupid things when you're drunk. You hurt yourself. You, you compromise your health. It's really hard on the people around you. You tend to turn into a liar, and it screws up your life. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but it's pretty fun. Yeah, well, it is, but you need something better than that. And what's better isn't being straight and, 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 and not making mistakes. It's like that's all prohibition in some sense. What's mm-hmm. better is, no, you need an adventure, man. You need to get out there and have something to do yeah. and, and something worth waking up for. And you need, that's the substitute for the addiction. Actually, the addiction is the substitute for that, if if truth be known. Right, but, but eventually you can flip that around, and you can find the you know the uh, the much girthier and and more. Uh, there's a lot of sexy weight in having self worth, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what I've started to slowly mm-hmm. find in my life. Yeah, and you might also like the thing too is you know I mean there's something kind of I don't know the the bar scene that. The, the heavy drinking scene, there's something kind of edgy about it, you know, and something kind of adventurous mm. about it. And, you know, you see that it's kind of dramatized in people like Tom Waits, who's got that real hard edge, or Johnny mm-hmm. Cash, or people, hard living guys. You oh, know, yeah. Guys with six really... or seven livers in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, there's something kind of romantic about that. Yes. And, and fair enough, you know, but, well, then what that means is you have to build something like that into your own life. Mm. So maybe you need to go, maybe you need to, you know, take an adventurous trip now, and then you got to have something there that, that, that's that's edgy to replace that. And sometimes if people need a catalyst, so there's that moment, right? Like for me, the catalyst was like, um, you know, I needed to probably, I was experimenting with cocaine and I sacrificed like a, a, a neat job opportunity with that. I had planned on being there for the job. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, I'd spent the night doing cocaine. Right. So I realized, okay, this is not... This is a little out of my control, so I have to make yep. this. But if, if if people don't have that sort of – how do they create – is there a way to create their own catalyst? Like you just said, like take well, a trip well, or – Well, one thing – okay. So one of the things we talked about talking about is I have this program online mm-hmm. called – you can find it at selfauthoring.com or you can find it on my website. Which yep, is and we'll Jordan. put both the links right yep. here. Okay, so one of the program the programs help you write about your life. Mm-hmm. And by the way, you don't have to be able to write very well to do this. And if you do it badly, that's just fine as long as you do it because doing it is badly – is way better than not doing it at all, which mm-hmm. is kind of like a motif for life, right. right? Get the hell out there and do it. You're <laughs> yeah. not going to do it perfectly, but it's better than not doing it at all. You make your mistakes, but you'll learn. One part of the program, which is the future authoring program, helps people develop a plan for their life. Mm-hmm. You actually need a plan for your life because the thing is, the plan gives you goals, things to aim at. And like, imagine you went to the, the shooting range and you didn't have a target. Mm-hmm. Well, what the hell fun is that? What are you going to do? Shoot your rifle into the air? There's yeah, nothing about that nothing. that's useful. Shoot your friend, shoot you're, your you're, wife. <laughs> you're still shooting, <laughs> right. but it's not fun. Right, there's you, no there's no game. That's right, and the game is to hit the damn target. Okay, so first of all, there's no game without a target. All right, so fine, you need a target. And then you might say, well, is the game worthwhile? And the answer might be, well, how, 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 challenging, is the tar- how challenging is the place that you put the target? If it isn't challenging enough, if it's challenging enough, the game will be worthwhile. Well, there you go. That's the secret to life. It's like, if what you're aiming at is challenging enough, the game will be worthwhile. Well, it's not worthwhile. It's like, well, reconfigure your aims then. You're not aiming high enough. By your own judgment, say, well, this isn't meaningful. It's like, hey, man, you're not aiming high enough. Because if you were, it would be meaningful. Yeah. That's the, okay. So while the future authoring program, more than that, because I think of it as a bulwark against hell. Mm. And I mean, I mean that both literally and metaphysically. It's like, it's actually vital that you take your place in the world and you find a meaningful, responsible path forward because it's in that pathway that you find the meaning in your life and that buttresses you against the catastrophe of life. And if you have, if you don't have that, you have the aimlessness and the suffering and the pointlessness and your own malevolence and bitterness. It's, it's hell. Yeah. And then you make hell for you and you make hell for your family and you make hell for the community. It's like none of that's good. And so whenever I see people step away from that and they're moving 
moving forward and they're telling me about it, I think. And I really think, great, that's a miracle, man. Keep mm -hmm. it up. Like, it's really important. And I don't care what you're doing. You know, and I have lots of respect for working class guys. I mean, I came from a little town. I've had all sorts of working class jobs. You know, I worked on a, I worked as a short order cook and I worked as a, as a bartender in a rough cowboy bar, mm -hmm. a couple of them. I worked as a b <laughs> drill bit retipper and a gas jockey and a, and uh, I worked on a rail crew putting line, putting railway lines through and worked as a beekeeper and, and in plywood mill, mm. lots and lots of jobs like that. And, yeah. you know, and I've renovated houses and, and so I've worked mm. with lots of contractors and so forth. And I like, I think working class guys, the whole bloody world rests on their shoulders. It really matters if they do a good job. And mm -hmm. so a lot of working class guys come to my shows and they say, look, I've been listening to your lectures while I'm, I'm doing long haul trucking or while I'm working in my forklift, whatever, I think, great, man, get the hell out of it. Do your job properly. Do it. You bet. And do it right. Support your family. Man the hell up. Live a responsible life. And, and what you're doing is valuable. I don't care what anyone else has to say about it. Yeah, I've, I've heard, uh, I'm in a 12-step program 